If you've been following my channel for a while now, you'll know that I'm not particularly a fan of any company, but rather what I'm a fan of is market competition. I think when you have a market where there's healthy competition and not stagnation, it results in competitive products and pricing. With the GPU market as lopsided as it feels today, there's a good chance it can become even more one-sided with AMD potentially backing out from various segments of the market soon. Not something I'm sure many of you wanted to hear, but let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Over the past few weeks, there's been a lot of discussion surrounding AMD's Radeon GPU division and they're not in the best spotlight. Recently, it was reported that in the first quarter of 2024, AMD saw a significant decline in its gaming revenue. The company's gaming business earned $922 million, marking a 48% decrease year over year and a 33% decrease quarter over quarter. And this decline has raised several questions about about the future of AMD and the gaming GPU market as a whole. On the channel a few weeks ago, we talked about how MSI had put out a statement where they said that they will no longer be making high-end RX 7000 GPUs and their current focus is on their NVIDIA RTX GPUs. From a business standpoint, this does make sense because compared to other AIBs and AMD exclusive partners like Sapphire or XFX, they just didn't have as many options and the quality level towards Radeon cards just wasn't on par as those brands and it regressed even further as time went on. So so they wouldn't sell nearly as well as their NVIDIA counterparts and therefore it made the most sense for them to just drop that portion of their product portfolio and focus on what's moving the most volume. Another large contributor to AMD's decline in their gaming revenue comes from lower than expected sales for Microsoft and Sony for their Xbox and PlayStation consoles respectively. AMD sells SOCs to their gaming divisions that's utilized in the current gen consoles and if they're not selling as well this doesn't just hurt Microsoft and Sony but it does also hurt AMD in the process. The current gen consoles have been on the market for quite some time now, so naturally you're going to see some interest taper off. Along with that, with rumors of a PS5 Pro and the Xbox Series X refresh coming this holiday season, this will make a lot of people hold off on their purchasing decisions. One other significant factor is the stiff competition AMD has been facing from Nvidia in the GPU market. Nvidia hasn't just been a dominant player in the high-end GPU market, but even in the mid-range and entry level, they've been outselling them, and AMD has struggled to keep up. AMD's passive strategy with RDNA 3 where they essentially followed Nvidia's lead when it came to their pricing structure didn't pan out the way they had expected it would, and this was one of the main things brought up every time we discuss a new release from Radeon. How well does this card compete with Nvidia, and if not, how much cheaper does AMD need to be in order for it to look attractive versus Nvidia's exclusive features and software advantages? Nvidia's efficiency definitely goes a long way for folks who live in countries with high electricity costs. There's also a lot more to this discussion than simply simply who's just, you know, the fastest in rasterization performance. Furthermore, they ended up also just competing with themselves, with many RDNA 3 cards like the 7800 XT and 7600 XT, they weren't noticeably faster than their previous generation counterparts, which often led to reviewers saying, hey, if you found a 6800 XT or 6600 XT in stock or on a clearance deal or on the used market, just get that instead. The only thing you'll be missing out on is AV1, and that'd be more applicable to content creators though I'd argue more serious content creators aren't even buying AMD, they're just going to choose Nvidia. And then some exclusive RDNA 3 features like fluid motion frames, which is also a hit or miss. So for all their releases this generation, I can't recall there ever being a time where all the reviewers said that, hey, this card is fantastic and you should definitely go out and buy it. I guess the only one that looked somewhat decent was the 7900 XTX, because when it came out, its raster performance traded blows with the 4080, which made it like 30% slower than the 4090, but also 60% cheaper, however, it's $1,000, which is not where the vast majority of the user base even is. This is what I meant by them just following Nvidia's lead. They offered the most compelling product in the high-end segment, whereas everything below was just plain mediocre or underwhelming. A big stain on RDNA 3 was just how underwhelming its architecture was when it came to real-world performance. Prior to the launch of RDNA 3, the Radeon team had made bold claims of 50% plus performance per watt improvements compared to RDNA too, but when it came to real-world performance, it was nowhere close to that. So something within the hardware or the silicon just wasn't working, and it didn't pan out the way they had expected it would. This could be one of the reasons why there's so many rumors circulating around that with RDNA 4, AMD isn't going to be competing in the high-end anymore, and RDNA 4 will essentially be RDNA 3, but with fixed
fixed is applied to its architecture on a tweak node with some clock speed improvements. Then RDNA 5 will be a new architecture from the ground up which will bring them back into high end. This doesn't necessarily mean it's going to hurt them or set them back and in fact this is a strategy that a lot of PC gamers and hardware fans have been asking AMD to enact for quite some time. Last month on the channel we had discussed where we talked about PC gamers aren't upgrading their GPUs as frequently anymore and the reason for this is because people are over the whole realism and ultra graphics aspect of gaming. At one point this was definitely a driving force for selling new games but nowadays I find that it's one of the last things people are concerning themselves with when it comes to video games on PC. And the other thing was that with prices rising of new graphics cards, this is also one of the reasons why people are holding on to their old graphics cards for much longer and trying to power through whether that's using lower end settings, mods, and using frame generation upscaling. Let's take a new release like Ghost of Tsushima for example. Prior to its release, a lot of the discussion I had seen on PC gaming centric forums and places like Slash RPC Gaming on Reddit. It wasn't necessarily to do with its performance on PC or the graphics, but rather the discussion was about the game itself, such as the story, the combat, and the gameplay. This is a game that was originally released for the PS4, it doesn't have mind-blowing graphics, but still looks nice nonetheless, and regardless, people just weren't concerning themselves with that. And Nixus Software, who have worked on various PlayStation ports, did do an excellent job because many people claimed they had no issues with performance, but they also went a step further and included multiple vendor upscaling technologies, so that also helped a ton with people who aren't buying high-end hardware and still managed to attain a solid playable experience while maintaining pretty decent visual fidelity. But Circling back to AMD, if their RX 8000 RDNA 4 based GPUs are going to be targeting the mid-range and mainstream segments, it'd still be a viable option for them. It'd be a similar strategy like when they released Polaris and we got cards like the RX 470 and RX 580. And in fact, the RX 580 is still the best card when it comes to their user market share on a database like the Steam Hardware Survey. Let's say AMD offers an RX 8800 XT or a RX 8800 for 500 bucks, and it offers performance similar to the RX 7900 XT then that'd be a compelling offer for many gamers, and if they offered RX 7800 XT levels of performance at say $350, that'd also be a pretty decent option. With the performance per dollar those options potentially could have, it'd fill a lot of requirements for gamers in those segments, as the vast majority are still gaming at 1080p with some on 1440p and barely any on 4K. Like if you think about it, that is RTX 4080, 4080 super levels of performance, and I have yet to see anyone claiming or complaining about RTX 4080s running at 1080p or 1440p and not being able to provide a playable experience. Then on top of that, if they can fix some of the stuff that was broken with RDNA 3, improve their ray tracing performance, improve their upscaling and their overall software features, then that would at least get them back on track in the mindset of gamers who have just at this point looked at them and said, you know, why would I buy this instead of an Nvidia card? The other elephant in the room that we have to address and what has also contributed to AMD's report to the decline in sales is that we're also in a recession and a state of hyperinflation globally leading to people being a lot more frugal when it comes to their buying power and finances. Basically everything you can think of from housing costs, groceries, utilities, oil, everything has gone up in prices with wages mostly remaining stagnant or if you're in a region with an influx of newcomers there's been wage suppression. With these kinds of circumstances, folks aren't jumping out of their chairs to buy $700 or $1,000 plus GPUs when at the end of the day its primary use case is going to be for gaming. So for AMD, if their strategy is going to be to focus on the lower end and mid-range markets, we're talking about $500 below, it could be a very viable move for them to at least weather out the storm. They can take this time to optimize and improve their software and try their best to bring feature parity with Nvidia and not just that, at least come up with their own exclusive features that are impressive that you cannot get with Nvidia. And while that's going on, people who are in the market looking for new GPUs that don't care about getting the best of the best would be perfectly fine with the GPU in that mid-range $400, $500 segment that delivers 7900 XT or XTX levels of performance. What adds some credibility to this rumor is that Kepler, who's been known for data mining AMD stuff before, found through patch notes some info that alluded to a possibility of a monster high-end 200 CU RDNA 4 GPU that was cancelled. It's funny because when I see people talking about AMD, they want them to do just two things. Deliver some amazing bank for the buck cards like the RX 480 or just go all out throw power and efficiency out of the window, and just make the biggest damn thing possible. If this 200CU GPU was actually a thing, this would mean AMD was at one point serious about the latter. 
Also, recently AMD's exclusive AIBs like Sapphire and XFX have rolled out some new limited edition cards for AMD GPUs. The most interesting to me was XFX's Phoenix Nirvana 7900 XTX graphics card, which is using a mammoth quad slot cooler. Now, to be fair, they do say it's a limited edition card and only sold in China, but regardless, it's still overkill for even a 7900 XTX, and why they are releasing a card like this so late in the GPU's life cycle is beyond me unless these were coolers that were originally planned to be used for high-end RDNA 4, but since AMD scrapped that plan, they decided to utilize them in some different manner. Now, I had mentioned at the beginning of this video how I'm a fan of market competition, and with AMD possibly leaving the high-end, people fear that this is basically going to give Nvidia free reign to do whatever they want, and without a high-end RDNA 4 to go up with a RTX 5080, prices are just going to skyrocket. What I'll say to that is that at this stage, Nvidia is going going to be doing whatever they want regardless of Radeon's presence in those segments. With how much market domination they have, it's the others who are following their lead. Just like how if the RTX 4080 was actually launched at $800, you'd see the 7900 XTX sell for $700, or if they had launched it at $1,500, then AMD would have responded with a $1,200 7900 XTX. Nonetheless, it doesn't even matter when the vast majority of gamers don't even reside in those segments, and like I said, a lot of PC gamers these days aren't even yearning for ultra-high-end graphics, they'll be happy to see good value options in the lower-end segments. But AMD are right, things will definitely get worse before they start to improve, and that's mainly because we're in this stage right now where everyone's sort of eyeing what comes out next. The current gen stuff is about a couple years old and they're thinking if you know what, if I've already waited this long, what's another six months or so? Once they do roll out their new GPUs, they should hopefully bounce back from the slump. Right now, they're also focused on other areas of the computing space with HPC, AI, and their CPU division. Another topic that I wanted to briefly touch upon, but we'll save that for another video, was the impact of the handheld market on discrete GPUs. AMD is a very large player in the space, and that is also something to consider. But for now, that's going to do it for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.